The sky was an unusually bright shade of purple over the dry, endless desert plains of Zygoth Seven, a planet where the concept of moisture was as foreign as the idea of quiet at a Las Vegas casino. For eons, the Zygothians, an all-female race except for mating, which they had a few males for that task, they were lanky, perfect, shimmering, skinned aliens with a penchant for sarcasm and large, expressive eyes, had made peace with their waterless existence. Their homeworld was a parched wasteland populated by mole rats the size of bears, lizards that could recite poetry, albeit terribly, and a variety of other creatures that had evolved to survive in conditions where hydration was considered a mythical concept, like unicorns or low-calorie cake. But while the Zygothians had developed the ability to thrive without so much as a drop of water, they had one little problem. They really, really liked baths. Not just any old dip in the tub, though. The Zygothian baths were supposedly legendary, if you could find any water to have one, that is. Over the centuries, bathhouses had become places of both legend and nostalgia, much like Earth's tales of Atlantis, except with more bubbles and fewer tragic endings. And then, one fateful day, using a combination of advanced galactic cartography, quantum physics, and a very intricate form of space gossip, they discovered Earth. A planet not only teeming with water, but with water in such abundance that the earthlings wastefully used it for everything from drinking to making small fountains in front of shopping malls. Even worse, they let it rain from the sky for free. It was almost offensive. After a brief scouting mission, the Zygothians found the perfect location, a hidden, untouched waterfall deep in a remote region of Earth, far from the prying eyes of its clueless inhabitants. The place was ideal, lush greenery, sparkling water cascading over rocks, no annoying tourists taking selfies. It was bath time. Thus began the great bathing expeditions of Zygoth Seven, a semi-annual event where the Zygothian females would discreetly hop on their sleek, almost too streamlined to be practical starship and zip over to Earth for a quick dip. The humans never noticed. They were always too busy staring at their phones, mistaking the alien ship for weather balloons, or being distracted by the latest reality TV show scandal. The Zygothians would land, bathe and leave, usually without so much as a footprint left behind. That was until one fateful Tuesday when everything changed. The incident, or how humans almost became loofers. It was a fine autumn day in the Pacific Northwest, the kind of day where the air smells faintly of pine needles and the sound of distant waterfalls mixes soothingly with birdsong. Jake and Tom, two lifelong friends and self-proclaimed outdoorsy types, were hiking a trail they had found on an obscure Reddit post about secret spots no one knows about. They had no idea just how secret this spot really was. I told you, this would be worth it. Jake said, adjusting his backpack and wiping the sweat from his brow. Just wait till we get to the waterfall. It's supposed to be this insane hidden gem. Tom, who was less of an outdoorsy type and more of a let's get back before the game starts type, grunted in response. If we don't get lost first, how far is this thing? Not far, about half a kilometer more. They trudged through the underbrush, unaware that something extraordinary was about to happen. As they neared the waterfall, a strange humming sound caught their attention. Do you hear that? Tom asked, frowning. Probably just a drone or something, Jake said dismissively. People fly those things everywhere now. But as they pushed through the last bit of foliage, the sight that met their eyes was beyond anything they could have imagined. There, lounging in the pool beneath the waterfall, were five strikingly tall, shimming-skinned women. They were laughing, splashing, and exchanging what appeared to be sarcastic remarks in a language that sounded like a combination of dolphin clicks and someone trying to gargle while reciting Shakespeare. Jake and Tom froze. For a moment the only sound was the waterfall, blissfully unaware of the impending awkwardness, one of the Zygothian women, noticing the two humans, stood up. Her eyes widened in shock. 
What are those? she asked in her native tongue, pointing at the two men. The others followed her gaze and gasped in unison. They had never seen a male of any species apart from their own, and even then, only during the brief and highly organized mating seasons, which were about as romantic as a tax audit. The Zygothians were, to put it mildly, intrigued. These are males, one of the other Zygothians said, her voice a mixture of curiosity and disbelief. She tilted her head to the side, her large, expressive eyes narrowing as if trying to decipher some complex puzzle. They're so... squishy. The Zygothians, who had only ever encountered males of their own species in brief, sterile mating ceremonies, found the concept of males being around both bewildering and oddly thrilling. Their males were hardly companions, they were more like temporary contractors, brought in to complete a job and sent on their way with no need for small talk or post-mating brunches. But these earth males, they were different. They had a certain ruggedness about them, even if they did look like they'd faint if they had to deal with a Zygothian mole rat. Jake, meanwhile, tried to process the scene in front of him. His brain was doing the mental equivalent of a car skidding on ice. Uh, Tom he whispered, his voice wavering. Are we seeing this? Is this real? Tom blinked repeatedly, his eyes wide. Dude, I think we just stumbled into the wrong kind of secret waterfall. The Zygothians exchanged glances, clearly unsure how to handle the situation. They had never been interrupted during one of their clandestine bathing trips before. The earth was supposed to be a quiet, unbothered place where they could enjoy the luxuries of water without interference. Having two males standing there, gawking at them, was definitely not part of the plan. One of the Zygothians, evidently the most daring of the group, waded out of the water and approached the humans. She was tall, easily seven feet, and her shimmering skin caught the light from the waterfall in a way that made her look almost otherworldly, which, to be fair, she was. She squinted at Jake and Tom, as if trying to figure out whether they were dangerous or just terribly lost. "'Do you come here often?' she asked in perfectly accented English, her voice both curious and teasing. Jake and Tom exchanged bewildered looks, Tom, who had always prided himself on his ability to flirt under the most unlikely circumstances, cleared his throat. Uh, well, we, uh, we were just hiking, you know, looking for the waterfall, and, uh, found more than we expected, I guess. The Zygothian raised an eyebrow, her lips curling into an amused smile. More than you expected, indeed. Another of the Zygothians, still lounging in the pool, called out, Do you think they'll wash our backs? We wouldn't have to do it ourselves for once. The first Zygothian's eyes lit up, and she turned back to Jake and Tom. Can you wash backs? she asked, as if this were a perfectly reasonable question to ask two strangers you've just met at a remote waterfall. Jake's mouth opened, then closed, then opened again. He resembled a fish that had just been told it needed to recite Shakespeare. Uh, well, I mean, if you, I guess we might be able to... He trailed off, completely unsure of where he was going with this. Tom, on the other hand, was starting to clue in. Wait, wait, he said, holding up a hand. Are you aliens? Like, actual aliens? The Zygothian woman blinked. Obviously, she said, as if this were the most self-evident thing in the universe. Do Earth males not have eyes? Jake, still wrestling with the fact that he was talking to a seven-foot-tall, shimmering-skinned woman who had just asked him to wash her back, finally managed to form a coherent thought. Okay, so you're aliens, and you come here to bathe, because there's no water where you're from. The Zygothian sighed. Exactly. Our planet is all deserts and mole rats. It's dreadful. We discovered Earth and realized it was basically a planet-sized spa. So we come here when we need a break. The water, the greenery, the peace. It's perfect. Except for the occasional interruption, she added, with a pointed look at the two men. Tom, still processing, muttered, Planet-sized spa, sure, why not? 
The Zygothians in the pool giggled, clearly amused by the human's confusion. So, the daring one said again, about those backs? Jake and Tom, despite their initial shock, were beginning to think this situation might not be so bad. Sure, they had stumbled across an alien bathing party in the middle of nowhere, but honestly, it wasn't the weirdest thing they'd seen on the internet, and there was something undeniably intriguing about these alien girls. Tom, ever the opportunist, cleared his throat. So, uh, backwashing, huh? He gave Jake a sideways glance, as if to say, Dude, this might be our moment. Jake, however, wasn't quite as convinced. His brain was still caught somewhere between we're talking to aliens and what if they eat us after. Uh, yeah, about that, he stammered, scratching the back of his neck. Backwashing is great and all, but, uh, before we go any further, maybe we should, I don't know, make sure we won't get vaporized or something. The leading Zygothian, who had clearly taken charge of this bizarre situation, laughed, a bright, tinkling sound that somehow managed to be both charming and slightly terrifying. Vaporize you? Why would we vaporize you? You're far too squishy for that. Besides, she added with a sly smile, you earth males seem quite useful. We've never had anyone to wash our backs before. The other Zygothians, still lounging in the pool, nodded in agreement, clearly liking the idea of outsourcing their bathing duties. One of them, who had been lazily floating on her back, called out, Do you also do feet? Asking for a friend. Tom grinned. I mean, we're pretty flexible. Feet, backs, whatever you need. Jake shot him a look. Dude, seriously? Tom just shrugged. What? It's not every day you get to help out a bunch of alien, uh, bath enthusiasts. The Zagothian leader raised an eyebrow. You earth males are remarkably eager she observed, a hint of amusement in her voice. But just to clarify, this is strictly backwashing. Nothing more, nothing less. Jake, who had been about to say something vaguely flirtatious, closed his mouth and nodded quickly. Right, just backs. Totally clear on that. No funny business. The Zygothians seemed satisfied with this arrangement. Excellent their leader said, turning her back to the humans and gesturing to the waterfall behind her. You may begin. Jake and Tom exchanged a glance. This was happening. This was actually happening. With a mixture of confusion, excitement and just a hint of fear, they waded into the water, which was refreshingly cool compared to the weirdness of the situation. Jake grabbed a nearby flat rock that looked vaguely like a loofah, while Tom somehow found a sponge. Did aliens bring bath accessories with them? As they hesitantly began scrubbing the Zygothians' backs, careful to maintain appropriate distance and avoid any awkward touching, the aliens chatted amongst themselves in their strange, clicking language. Jake caught snippets of what sounded like gossip about someone named Zilara and her terrible taste in earrings. So, Tom said, trying to keep the conversation going as he scrubbed, you gals come here often? The Zygothian leader glanced over her shoulder, raising one eyebrow in a way that suggested she was both amused and judging him on some cosmic level. Twice a cycle, we like to keep our visits brief and unnoticed. Jake, trying to make sense of this, asked, Wait, how long is a cycle? Approximately 13.7 Earth months, she replied nonchalantly. Jake did some mental math. So, you've been coming here for, what, centuries? The Zygothians all burst into laughter, a sound that echoed eerily through the forest. Centuries? Oh no, darling, we've been coming here for millennia. Humans have never noticed. You're the first. Wait, the first ever? Tom asked, his scrubbing hand freezing mid-motion. Indeed, and I must say you seem remarkably calm about it. Most species would have fainted by now. Jake and Tom exchanged a glance. Well, I mean, Jake said, we've seen some stuff on the internet. You know, UFO sightings, conspiracy theories, that kind of thing. So this is weird, but not that weird. The Zygothians chuckled again, clearly enjoying the humans' nonchalant reactions. 
Just as things were starting to feel almost normal, well, as normal as scrubbing the backs of alien women under a hidden waterfall could feel, there was a sudden, loud beep from the Zygothian leader's wrist. She glanced down at a sleek, glowing device strapped to her arm and sighed. Oh no, the Zygothian leader said, her voice tinged with disappointment. She tapped the glowing device on her wrist, which now emitted a series of increasingly urgent beeps. Our time's up. We need to head back before the planetary alignment shifts. The other Zygothians groaned in unison. Already? One of them whined, splashing lazily in the water. We just started relaxing. Another added, I didn't even get to use the fruit-scented nebula soap this time. The leader waved a hand dismissively. You know the rules. If we don't leave now, we won't be able to pass through the temporal vortex for another twenty-six Zygothian cycles. And frankly, I don't fancy spending that long stuck here, even if it is a decent spa planet. Jake, his hands still awkwardly holding the makeshift loofah rock, blinked. Wait, you're just leaving? Like, right now? Tom, clearly disappointed that this unexpected adventure was coming to an abrupt end, chimed in, but we barely got started. We were bonding, right? I thought maybe we could, you know, hang out, maybe grab a drink after this or something. The Zygothians looked at each other, their large eyes blinking in unison. The leader turned back to the two men, her expression somewhere between bemusement and pity. You Earth males are adorably naive, she said a gentle chuckle in her voice. This is strictly a bath visit. We come, we bathe, we leave. No post-bath mingling, no drinks, no back-scrubbing beyond what's necessary. Tom's face fell. So, nothing else? Nothing else, the leader confirmed with a smirk. But you did a commendable job with the backs. We'll remember that. Jake, still trying to wrap his head around the whole situation, cleared his throat. So, you guys are just gonna hop back in your spaceship and disappear, and we're supposed to pretend this never happened? The Zygothian leader shrugged. You'll probably tell your friends, but they won't believe you. Humans never do. Those who do believe will be labeled as conspiracy theorists or put on strange late-night talk shows. It's really no trouble for us. As if on cue, the sleek silver spaceship that had been cloaked in invisibility shimmered into view above the waterfall. It hovered effortlessly, its aerodynamic shape almost too perfect, like something out of a sci-fi movie, except this was real, very real. The Zygothians began to wade out of the water, their bodies glistening in the sunlight as they moved with an almost ethereal grace toward the ship. One by one, they stepped onto a shimmering platform that extended from the spacecraft, which looked suspiciously like a very fancy elevator. Before the leader followed her fellow bathers, she turned to Jake and Tom one last time. Well, this has been fun. You Earth males are more interesting than I expected. Perhaps we'll see you next time. Next time? Jake asked a little too eagerly. The Zygothian leader grinned, her eyes twinkling with amusement. Maybe. We do like variety in our backwashers, but remember, we only come here to bathe. Don't get any ideas. Tom, still trying to salvage some dignity, gave a half-hearted thumbs up. No ideas, just washing. Cool, cool, cool. With a final wave, the leader stepped onto the platform, which rose smoothly into the ship. The spaceship gave a soft hum. Then, in a blink, it zipped off into the sky, disappearing into the atmosphere faster than any Earth technology could dream of. For a long moment, Jake and Tom stood there in stunned silence, the sound of the waterfall the only thing breaking the stillness around them. Finally, Tom spoke up. So, that just happened, right? Jake nodded slowly. Yup, that definitely just happened. Tom looked down at the sponge he was still holding and tossed it into the water with a splash. Well, that's one for the books. They stood there for a few more seconds, trying to process everything. Then Tom, never one to stay serious for too long, turned to Jake and said, You think we should have asked for their number? Jake groaned and shook his head. Dude, they're aliens. I'm pretty sure they don't have phones. 
Tom grinned. Yeah, but still, next time, I'm bringing some scented bath oils. Maybe that'll get us some extra points. Jake laughed despite himself. Sure, man. Maybe next time we'll get to wash their feet. As the two friends began their hike back through the forest, still grappling with the with what had just happened, wondered if they might get a ride on that spaceship, even if they might be blood-sucking aliens, would be worth it. The pair both glanced at each other, as if simultaneously having the exact same idea. Dude, yes dude, let's do it.